What's up, everybody? Welcome to SLC Puck! Woo! We're in it. We're in the thick of it right now. We're Well, we're not in the thick of it right now, but we're about to enter the the tapering up to the thick of it. And by it, I mean hockey season. Holy moly. Here we are, episode 38, September 4th. A fabulous Wednesday and an action-packed Wednesday, if you ask me. So many things to retweet today on the Twitter sphere. It was absolutely bonkers. My fingers were flying. Every time I got a notification from the Utah Hockey Club or a couple other people whose uh, notifications I have turned on on Twitter, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much happening. And it, it's great. It feels like we're back at the uh, beginning stages of the show when we started in April when there was so much to talk about. We kind of had a bell curve, really. There was like uh, a lot to talk about. And then it dipped big time, and I was like scrambling for things to say. And now we're 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 on our way back up. We're we're getting back in the swing of things. And you're listening to SLC Puck. I'm your host Austin Facer. Appreciate you coming aboard and joining me for for some fun today, talking some Utah hockey, Utah hockey podcast, Utah hockey club, all that good stuff. Uh, Utah hockey merch. If, are you guys interested in some some hockey related merch? If you are, I would recommend heading over to slcpuck.shop. Lots of great stuff still. This is a great way to support the show. If you like the show, like, comment, subscribe, do all that. But if you want to support me, you know, financially, this would be the way to do it. And uh, uh, the hat that I'm wearing, uh, I love it. It's a great hat. I've gotten a lot of comments on it. I sold a few. It's already sold out uh, from my distributor, my, my the, the people who make the hats for me. So... We'll wait for that to get back uh, in in the stock. But for now, there's a lot of other great stuff. Check it out. But, hey, let's get back to the task at hand, which is talking about many, 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 many things. And Wednesday, man, you know, we joked uh, when we started the show that, you know, I need, that Thursday was the big news day for Utah Hockey Club. And so it was silly to record episodes on Wednesdays because, you know, the news was going to break the next day. And I had a conspiracy theory that Ryan Smith was trying to sabotage the show by doing that. I don't think that's the case today. If anything, he's helped me out with giving me a lot to talk about. And I think that the thing that lit up the Twitter sphere first thing uh, today, uh, Wednesday, again, September 4th, was our first really good look at a, a Utah hockey club player in a uniform. And we've seen screen sh- screenshots of what the team will look like on EA Sports NHL 25. We get the real deal today. We get a good look at Mr. Josh Doan in a Utah Hockey Club uniform. He's uh, he was doing uh, some sort of rookie challenge, uh, rookie faceoff photo shoot, and he was out and about. He was uh, with a bunch of other rookies from the, around the hockey National Hockey League, uh, taking photos and whatnot. And look at that! There it is in the flesh, a Utah Hockey Club player in a Utah Hockey Club uniform. The the black, the the rock black uniform. Utah going diagonally down the side. This is going to be a very visual heavy episode. So. I say this all the time. If you're listening on, on Apple, Spotify, I love you. I, I love being in, in the car with you. Um, where are we going? What are we doing? What do you have to drink? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you want to get the full benefit of SLC Puck, I would switch over to, to the YouTube channel and subscribe uh, to, to really get the full, uh, the full Austin Facer experience, which is what you all want, right? But anyway, look at Josh Doan here. He looks great. He's got a big old smile on his face. He's clearly excited to be there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was good for a lot of those guys who are rookies around the National Hockey League. I bet they know each other fairly well, so it was fun for them to all get together and take photos. But, man, the story is how good these uniforms look. And I, I've said it on the show. You know, we know that this is just going to be a temporary look. Uh, we're anticipating the name of the team to be the Utah Yeti or the Utah Outlaws. And, and maybe we'll touch more on that uh, in a second because someone in my last video made a, a good comment about potential trademark issues and the Yeti Cooler Company. And I'll just say real quick, my contention is that I don't think the Yeti Cooler Corporation would be that upset about the word Yeti being out in the world much more. And furthermore, I believe they also have a, a very lucrative partnership with the NHL. So I'm sure there's some sort of, you know, finagling that's happening behind the scenes to, to make it work. That's that's just my guess. But anyway, someone, someone had a, a nice, insightful comment on that last episode. So I just thought I'd address that. Gosh, the Utah Hockey Club, though. Man, it's I'm getting excited here just looking at these uniforms. And what stood out to me immediately, because I have eagle eyes and I have an eye for detail, uh, and there are a couple things that stand out, actually. Um, 
if you look really closely at the shoulder, I mentioned uh, when we were looking at the screen caps of the video game that I thought the shoulder area was a good opportunity to to get like a, maybe a future logo in. That that might be a good way to placate people who buy this year's uniforms, and they could just you know maybe come back to the team shop and uh, get those uh, Yeti or Outlaws uh, logos uh, plas- or you know pasted on there, you know ironed on there, whatnot. Uh, but that that space is going to be used um, in the uniform this year, it looks like. And here's a closer look right here. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Here's a closer look right here. Here's Josh Stone meeting with the media. And you can see right here that the, we've seen this um, emblem uh, on the ice at the Oval. It looks I'm guessing this emblem is also going to be on the ice at the Delta Center, the inaugural season patch. Uh, they're going to throw that right there on the uh, on the shoulders of the, the uniforms, Look like so it looks like. So that's going to make... Uh, th- these uniforms in year one, where it is a temporary look, where it is a temporary name, they're going to have a, a commemorative feel to them, making them all the more special for those people who are willing to to wait and buy the uniform in, in 2025 when they become available. So, again, really cool. is awesome to see, uh, again, like our, our first really good look at these uniforms up close and personal because the uniform they handed T. Jaginla uh, at the uh, NHL draft was obviously just hastily done. It was, it was basically a black, a blank black jersey with uh, Utah, you know, ironed onto it. Th- this is the real deal. This is what it's wh- what the the players are going to be wearing, and it looks great. I mean, there's, I mean, if if you're a nerd like me and you love sports uniforms, if you go to sportslogos.net, I don't know if you remember this website. If this is for a deep cut for for hockey fans, there used to be this website, and I think it still exists, called Aesthetics. Where they did a very comprehensive review on see do you see why it's clever? It's aesthetics and ice put together. Aesthetics, right? It, it was a cool website. I loved going on there every day, especially when uh, I think it was Reebok rolled out like a, the whole new uniform set. Like this was like 15 years ago, and I remember in high school going on this website and just seeing all the details about the cool new uh, Buffalo Sabers Buff Slug, you know, logo logo and uniform and all that. Uh, so I'm an I'm an aesthetics nerd. And this stuff got me excited. We got we also got a good look at a, a couple of the goalie masks. That, that's what I just showed off briefly. So Jackson Stauber and uh, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not going to say his name. Car, Carl Vimil. He's the backup goalie. I got to get this name right. I'm not even going to try it. I'm going to learn the backup goalie's name uh, later, and we'll tr- we'll try it then. We're not. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm willing to embarrass myself to a certain degree on the show, but not but not that far. But I, this is Jackson Stauber's uh, uh, mask right here. Um, you know, he's he was signed. I think it's on a two-way contract, so he'll probably be spending uh, the, at least the start of the season with the Tucson Roadrunners. But still, he, when he's up here, he'll have a mask to wear. And it, I I really like some of these touches he put on here. Um, and you you got to look real close. Uh, there's two that really stand out. There's um, the one right here, which is the Salt Lake uh, 2002 Winter Olympics logo right there. And then right here, I don't even remember this, like – when the Olympics were around in 2002, like each sport had a little like icon to represent each, you know, each event. Yeah, a little like a little stick figure, right? That I guess they put on like signage and stuff like that. I remember this one being the hockey one that was around like the the E Center, the Maverick Center, and and they brought it back. So some really nice homages to the the O2 games on Jackson Stauber's mask. Gosh, this is it's it's getting real. It's getting so exciting. And again, let me just show off again my incredible eye for detail. One thing I did notice here, uh, looking at uh, Josh Doan's uniform, uh, and there's there were uh, other pictures of him on the ice at this thing, uh, is that he'll be wearing number 91, which I thought was interesting. And I, I said this before on the show because I was parroting what had been said by Steve Peters, who uh, works for All City. And by the way, All City just dropped their new uh, Utah Hockey podcast, so head over there and check that out when you're done with me. Uh, but the, Steve mentioned um, in his Utah, uh, it, like kind of like their farewell episode to the Coyotes, like a Utah team primer. Um, he talked about the Dones. He talked about how Josh Doan obviously wore um, 91 because it's a palindrome. And yeah, I know that word pretty good, huh? A palindrome of 19, which was his father's Shane, Shane Doan's number, number that's retired by the Arizona Coyotes. Um so he he wore ninety one as an homage. Uh, what what um, what uh, what was said on the all on that uh, all city podcast was that Doan was going to wear nineteen coming back here. But and so I th- I thought it was interesting that he wasn't wearing nineteen as as Steve Peters had previously said. So 
Thanks to you guys for the uh, sleuthing on this, helping me get to the bottom of this. I, the answer was found on, on Instagram here. Let me, oh, that was a little loud. And uh, here's Josh Doan talking about why he chose to go with uh, 91. 19, and then my mom was like, no, you're, you're keeping 91. She's like, it's your own thing. Stay with it. And, and I think that was something that we talked with as a family. Obviously, 19 is, is available again, but uh, my mom and I decided to, to stick with 91. There you go. You heard it there. Mom knows best. Mom said, listen, Josh, do your own thing. Nine, car, go your own way. You can go your own way. I wish I had that song queued up. But that, that, I, thought, I thought that was just a nice little uh, piece of investigative work that you guys helped me out with, uh, getting to the bottom of why uh, Josh Stone will be wearing uh, 91 for, for Utah. And you know, we're, not, we're not totally certain yet if he's going to be starting the year with the Utah Hockey Club. He's kind of one of those bubble guys right now. He's still pretty early in his career. Might be with uh, the Tucson Roadrunners to start the year, but he very well could make the team. And you got to think if they send him to this rookie thing to to get pictures taken in the uniform, that he probably has a pretty good chance of making the team. I think I think that's fair to say. But really, we're gonna again the, the excitement is building. We're gonna see a team on the ice. I would assume wearing these uniforms for the first time. Uh, it looks like in less than ten days. Uh, uh, the rookie faceoff in Los Angeles. Uh, September 13th through the 16th um, is coming up. And it, again, it's a team mostly built of, of rookies and prospects. And uh, my, my, uh, my guy Cole Bagley of KSL Sports had a really nice write-up. I think he hit the nail on the head. I think there's basically three guys to really watch for in this thing. Uh, if you're watching uh, for, you know, the future of uh, Utah, Hockey po- Utah Hockey Club's, uh, you know, I guess roster, uh, you know, it's T.J. Ginla, Cole Bedouin, and uh, Maverick Lamoureux are the three to look out for. And it feels like Lamoureux is probably the guy who's, like, closest to the NHL in that group um, because he was he was drafted a couple of years ago. And uh, th- I mean, there was a really good article on him in The Athletic not too long ago about the progress he's made. And what's funny is uh, one of my cousins thinks he's really handsome, too. Uh, she's She's gotten more into hockey and all that, and she's like, she's like I think this Maverick Lamoureux guy is just just the bee's knees. And I like, yeah, he's, he is nice looking. Yeah. He's, and he's a tall like defenseman. He's coming in. His own. I'm more concerned about that, but it is nice to know that we also are going to have some guys on the team who are handsome. I don't think we want a team of uggos, right? Certainly not. And, and, and case in point being the broadcast team that was announced today, it's a good looking bunch. Let's take a look at, again, so much news today. We got a good look at the uniforms. They announced the broadcast team. And to my chagrin, I didn't get the gig. They are not bringing me aboard for uh, to be on the broadcast team, at least for this season. So you know, time will tell what the what the future holds. That's a joke, by the way. A lot of people, a, a few, few people, sent me the job posting on Teamwork Online. They're like, you should apply. You'd be great at this. I'm like, first of all, I wouldn't be great at it at all. And second of all, I would never apply for a job like that because then I wouldn't be able to be here with you guys doing SLC Puck and having all the fun that we're having, right? And selling the merch and, um, I don't know, doing doing all the other stuff I like to do, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we'll have fun. We'll, 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 we'll do our own coverage of the team in our own way. But, yeah, I mean, we all – I mean, it is kind of fun to, to know who's going to be bringing, you know, the sound of – the sights and sounds of the Utah Hockey Club – into our homes this year and uh, it's it's kind of it's it's interesting that this this team is really made up of a bunch of folks who um already had gigs in the nhl and they i they bought into the vision of what's happening here at the utah hockey club and and in utah and this is something they want to be a part of it's also interesting to note that um not a there are no really local connections here in this group i just suspect there aren't like a lot of like high-end hockey broadcasters from from Utah, but there still is a lot of great broadcasting talent. And I think I, I would really like to see um, a lot of the some broadcasters that I can think of just off the top of my head, Adrian Denny, Tyson Whitting, um, you know, eventually having uh, an opportunity to, to work with the Utah Hockey Club. But let's take a deep dive and a look at the Utah Hockey Club broadcast team. Like I said, a good looking bunch. Love them. Look, a, a, a couple of women on the team. That's good. That's great. That's I, I think. Uh, that kind of thing is, is awesome. I, I saw someone say on Twitter how much they uh, thought it was cool to see um, you know women represent on this team because they have uh, uh, little girls who are all excited about the hockey team too, and this is something that's good for them. I, I agree. I think that's great. And let, let's learn a little bit more about these folks, okay? Here we go. This is the press release from our good friends over at the Utah Hockey Club here on their website. 
Now, um, the, the again, it, it sounds like this. It says there's a month long process to get the team together. Uh, you know, they think they've got a good group to deliver a seamless, engaging broadcast. Here, here are the folks that are going to be bringing the Utah Hockey Club to you to you on the on on the big on the on the t- I almost said the big screen, but that's a movie theater on the little screen. Uh, play-by-play guy. This was kind of interesting. Is Matt McConnell? He's uh, 29th season as a play-by-play broadcaster, very experienced. Uh, previously, he was with the Arizona Coyotes for the last 13 seasons, and is going to be going with the team uh, to um, to to Utah to be uh, to be working uh, on the Utah Hockey Club broadcast. And I I'm, I remember watching the last Arizona Coyotes game. I remember that week when it kind of became real that the the team was going to be moving here. And I can't remember. I can't remember if it was Matt or, or someone else. Maybe it was his, his color commentator. But they were like, "Oh man, we're gonna have to be driving Ubers n- n- next week." You know, they were obviously joking that they were gonna lose their jobs with the team moving. Um, if that was Matt who said that, uh, I got good news for you. You don't have to drive Uber uh, here. You can you can work on the Utah Hockey Club po- podcast. But if you want to drive Uber too, that'd be cool. I'd lo- I'd love to get picked up by Matt McConnell. That'd be amazing. I don't think it's going to happen though. But and, and on the broadcast, he'll be joined by Dominic Moore as his uh, as his analyst, one of the analysts. Um, he's an NHL veteran, played uh, nearly a thousand games for ten different teams. And here's the cool note on him: is um, he in 2024? Looks no, excuse me, 2014. Uh, he was awarded the Bill Masterton Trophy for his perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. And this trophy is one of the first things that new hockey lovers in Utah learned about. When our boy Connor Ingram was awarded this trophy uh, this last offseason for his um, ability to to uh, battle through uh, some uh, mental health challenges he's been dealing with, so I'm willing to bet they're going to get those two guys to sit down in a room and talk about what it takes to win the Bill Masterson Trophy for perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. I am sure you'll see that in a pregame segment at some point this season. They're joined uh, uh, on the analyst side by Nick Olchek. And Nick Olchek, if the Olchek name sounds familiar, it's because his dad, Eddie Olchek, has been a longtime hockey broadcaster. He was the, in the NHL for like 15 years as well. Nick's his son. Nick's forging his own hockey career as well. He was most recently the uh, color analyst for the Seattle Kraken. And, and his dad works for the Kraken as well. So you got to think if he's willing to like make the jump and you know get out of the booth with his dad, I mean, it might mean that his dad is maybe overbearing and wants to spread his wings. Sure. Yeah, that, he's 28. That could be true. Or it could mean that he just sees this as a great opportunity. And I, I think that's kind of the case with a lot of people around this team. They just see that the, what Utah Hockey Club is doing is a great opportunity to for them to shine. I think you could argue that that's why Mikhail Sergachev is so excited to be here because he has an opportunity to, to thrive in a, in a bigger role. Uh, just continue again with the broadcast team, Kim Becker, studio host, former Disney on Ice skater. Love that. Great show. We go to it a couple times a year with, uh, our, our, with my nephew. He loves Disney on Ice. Uh, but most recently, she was working as a Colorado Avalanche uh, host on Altitude TV. Um, she, uh, Sarah Merrifield is going to be the ringside reporter, and she uh, worked a lot in the Dallas market uh, with uh, teams such as the Stars, Rangers, Mavericks, all that kind of stuff. She went to Syracuse, big time journalism school, all that good stuff. And so again, really exciting. This is this is like becoming so real. We got a good look at the team, and we know who the voices are going to be, at least on the TV side. And it's a lot of fun, but I, I think one of the most interesting things about today's news is something that was kind of buried in this press release. Like it, it's, it's, it's easy to miss, and it, but I think it's like actually pretty significant. And I think it's something that most fans would be really interested in, in knowing. And it's in this last paragraph here. And I think, I think it's, I, it, it's in here a couple lines, a couple lines in. Okay. So let me just read it to you. This season, Seg Media, Smith Entertainment Group Media, will produce and broadcast all national, all non-nationally exclusive Utah Hockey Club games, including pre- and post-game shows over there, local TV station on Channel 16, uh, the official TV home of Utah Hockey Club, which is owned by the Scripps Company. And then here's the big one. And via a paid subscription-based streaming service. So if you're a cable cutter like me and you don't have access to Channel 16, 16, which, by the way, you could get on a TV antenna if you were so inclined, or you could sign up for FUBU or uh, I think maybe DirecTV. Um, but it looks like they're going to have a paid streaming service. So I'm thinking like an app that you could have on your phone. I know that they've, they've been trying to – they've been doing this with the Jazz. There's the Jazz Plus app where you, you, you pay an annual fee. You get all the non 
nationally televised games uh, on your app, which you can watch at home, on your phone, whatever. Uh, it sounds like they want to do the same thing for the hockey club, which I think is uh, which they're making it easy to, for us to to see these games. And I think that's the idea. It's it always drove me crazy. The old days with the Jazz, they they had such a horrible TV deal. It was like such it was a crazy difficult process to to get Jazz games in your house if you didn't have the right cable service. Uh, you know that's something that was a byproduct of regional sports networks and all that, and that, that was all kind of a mess. But now, I mean, it sounds like there's going to be an app where you can stream Utah Hockey Club games. And we'll find out more soon. Because, again, this last line is pretty interesting here. The full broadcast schedule, radio broadcast plan, and I'm assuming who the radio broadcasters will be, and details of the Seg Media DTC, that's direct-to-consumer streaming option for Utah Hockey Club, will be announced in the coming weeks. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for giving me more stuff to talk about. I love it. We're in the thick of it right now. I, I think I said that at the start of the show. We're, and, and again, we're not in the thick, but we're, we're going to be in it. We're going to be in it so fast. It's going to be insane. So many things are coming up. I, I told you, you t the rookie face-off uh, from L.A., that's going to be September 13th through the 16th. After that, preseason, first preseason games in Iowa against the St. Louis Blues, September 22nd. Uh, back here at the Delta Center, play the uh, Los Angeles Kings, September 23rd, Colorado Avalanche at the Maverick Center, October 5th, regular season home opener. The big one, the big one nationally televised on ESPN. That's not going to be on that app, but it's going to be big. It's going to be awesome, and I'm hoping to be there October 8th. Mark your calendars if you haven't already. And, of course, some love to our friends at the Grizzlies. They'll be, they'll be hosting the Allen Americans for their season opener November 1st. It's going to be here in the in, in the blink of an eye, folks, all this stuff. I am elated. I'm over the moon. I don't have to scramble for content anymore. For the love of God, that's the best part. Holy hell, that was tough. We got through it, guys. We're here. We're in hockey season. I'm excited. I love it. I can't wait to cover it some more. And we'll do it for you on SLC Puck. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon.